Hello, girls. The car you're riding in with me is called the Pink Panther, designed by a man named Ed Newton, just one of those wild designers from the 1960s. This is a classic example of thinking outside the box, or as the French would say, thinking outside leur box. <laughs> you can tell by the design of this car, automotive regulations really didn't become a major factor until the late 1960s. Safety, who cares? There were no rules back then, which meant you could literally design and drive anything. That's why customizers like Ed Newton, Gene Winfield, Big Daddy Roth, and George Barris could create these outlandish, one-of-a-kind cars that really embodied the era. What I'm seeing right now is called the Pleasure Capsule. It was the 60s. People were singing, swinging, loving, and hugging. That's what this machine was built for. Look, you even had your own princess phone, so you could call someone from your car. Imagine that, making a call from your automobile. I'll call you back, up. We're gonna meet Ed Newton in just a little while and talk to him about this design. But for now, let's just go for a ride. <laughs> right now, we're on our way to Bob's Big Boy, a legendary hot rodder's paradise since 1949. But first, I need to slip into something a little more comfortable if you catch my drift. You know what I'm talking about, fellas? <laughs> Ed Newton has been designing cars since he was a teenager. He worked frequently with the infamous Ed Big Daddy Roth, a legendary customizer and creator of the character Rat Fink. They built some of the most eccentric hot rods around, like the futuristic Orbitron and the ridiculous car I was just in, the Panthermobile. Or as the French call it, Le Panthermobile. Let me ask you about the Pink Panther again. Now, you had that area called the Pleasure Capsule. Is that what you called it? I think somebody else named that. <laughs> I was into racing, and it has a racing front end. Right. And I was also into very swoopy customs that were very sleek. Right. So therefore, I combined the two elements, and it just so happened that it was 27 feet long. This is a shop. This is where we build all the motorcycles and cars. And wow, we try to do all our own work when we can. We got our own paint shop and upholstery shop. There's all kinds of cool stuff in this room here too. But I want to see this Doble steam car, Jay. It's look at it. It's fantastic. Look, you can see the Doble steam car, car in a minute. Right now, I but, want to show you the rolls. But I, I want to see this Doble steam car. Look, we'll look at that in a minute. Look. Right now, we're going to look at the roll. But, 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 the Doble was right there. No, it's my garage. Okay. This is my car. I just stopped the, I don't even know who's driving. Well, let's get out of here, Jay. All right, let's go. I need some fresh air. All right. I, I, who dri I'll drive. All right, I guess he's driving. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with your screen. What you're seeing is actually two 1979 Honda Civics welded seamlessly together to create one over the top two-direction car. It's owned by my friend, Randy Carlson, who's the founder of Carchaeology, an organization that finds and preserves car relics. You know, when you're driving, it's a nice way to have a conversation, it is. actually. <laughs> Although it's a little nerve-wracking, because I can't see where you we're going. You have no idea where we're going. Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. Did you assemble this yourself? Did you buy it from somebody? Where did it come from? I found the car on eBay, Jay. Yeah. Somebody sent it to me because I'm into wacky cars, and. Nobody bid on it. Can you imagine that? Nobody bid not on it. Not one person eBay. bid on this on eBay. No, That's no, it, it went was not sold. So obviously this is a front-wheel drive chassis, so it's fairly simple that way. You just, I guess you just cut two cars in half and weld them together. Yeah, I mean, fortunately the engine and trans are all kind of one unit. So right. As far as the mechanical parts of it, it's pretty simple. The whole mystery is I don't know who built the car. It came from a used car lot in Kentucky, of all places. It sounds like a beginning of a joke. <laughs> Guy goes in a used car lot in Kentucky. Says I need two hundred. One for me, one for my wife. Well, okay, I can save money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Jay, I got to tell you, that was a blast, man. But I got to be honest with you, I thought this was like over the top. I mean, this is the Triple D Camaro, but well, you got something else that's more over the top than this. Do you have a second? Yeah, sure. I think you're really gonna like this. I'll be right back. Uh, Don't right. go anywhere. No. Okay. It's called the express lane. <laughs> what you used to go 
shopping? All these restaurants, I gotta be able to fill it up with groceries. Well, take me for a ride, let's do it. <laughs> let's go shopping. <laughs> Things fantastic. <laughs> This is definitely over the top. Watch out, we might hit the top. That's right. <laughs> it's the only way to shop. On dollar days, we own it. Yeah. Looking for a big box store. <laughs> well, guys, thank you. It was a lot of fun. I, I didn't think you would you would be able to go over the top from what we had, but this this certainly certainly does it. So thanks again. Great time. Go big or go yeah. home, right, Jake? That's right. You know the sad thing? I didn't get anything to eat. <laughs> I got screwed. I just came here for the food. <laughs>
Why did you build it? I knew I was going to have a lot of fun with it at Burning Man. <laughs> I mean, I knew <laughs> if I built something that was cool, it's just the funnest thing there. Burning Man is probably the most unconventional festival out there. There's music, art, performances, and the usual drugs and naked people running around. And believe me, Henry's no amateur. Whether he's playing with his band or debuting a new art car, he's become a familiar and always exciting presence at Burning Man. Wow. See, that's what I'm talking about. I wanted to do a sculptural exhaust array. Yeah, that sounds like one of those options. Well, if you want the sculptural exhaust array, it's going to cost you. OK, <laughs> fine. Then. And that's what that is. And how many yes. exhaust pipes are there? There's 31. It ends up sounding different than nearly any other car. You also get it in surround sound, like it goes boom, 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 boom. Can you fire it up? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you're right. It's like no exhaust you ever heard because it's coming from this way yeah. and not right here. That is really interesting. Any chance we could take this for a ride? Yeah, I think, I think of course. Wow. I mean, are you kidding? No, uh, but wait. We got to look the part. We have to look the part. Well, yeah, that's right. Okay, Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this settles it. I'm going to keep up on the Propecia. <laughs> you look like the good kid that joined the gang and got the mohawk <laughs> and then wound up getting killed. You know what I mean? In the movie. That's what you look like. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing.